Hello and welcome to the 10th lesson in this free Learn Violin Online beginner course. I'm Megan, the creator of LVO, and today we're going to be learning how to use our fourth finger. But before we get into the lesson, let's summarize everything that you've learned thus far. First thing that you learned was the parts of the violin and how to set up your violin if necessary. Next, you learned how to tune your violin, which is important to make sure all your notes sound right. You learned all about posture and positioning, which includes how to hold the bow, how to hold the violin, and how to position your left hand. And we also practice straight bowing on our open strings. Next, we learned fingers one, two, and three, and three scales to go along with them. We covered some basics of reading sheet music, including key signatures, time signatures, and note values. And finally, you should have played the first five songs in the free Violin Beginner Songbook that goes along with this course. By now, I hope that you see that clear step-by-step -step instruction really allows you to make progress. And if you're learning a lot now, just imagine how much you can improve in Learn Violin Online. Without further ado, let's start learning about our fourth finger. So the fourth finger, yes, it is the smallest finger and therefore the weakest finger, but there's also another reason why it can be so hard to use. Your third and fourth finger, so your ring and pinky finger, share a tendon in your hand. This means whenever your ring finger moves, your pinky wants to move and vice versa. This adds to the difficulty of using the fourth finger because it struggles with being independent. Our fourth finger is going to be placed a whole step away from our third finger. So if you recall, our first and second finger were a whole step away from each other, meaning that we had a pretty big space in between them but then our second and third finger were only a half step away from each other, so they were pretty close. Now our fourth finger is gonna be about that far away from our third. I know it doesn't look like much when you look at my hands right now, but trust me, it can feel like a really big distance, especially when you're learning it for the first time. Another thing to note about the fourth finger is that when you place your fourth finger down, the note that you're hearing is the same note as the open string above it. So for example, when you put your fourth finger down on the A string, you're going to be hearing the note E, just like your open E string. This is great because it offers several ways to check if your pitch is correct. First way is that you can just play that open string, right? Play your fourth finger on the A string and then play your open E string and see if they match. If they do, you're in tune. Another way to tell if your fourth finger is in tune is by the resonance, by the ring. Remember we talked about that when we were going over the third finger? Well, your fourth finger, since it is the name of your open string, it is going to ring and resonate a lot. So that's another way that you can tell if you're in tune. And of course, you can always practice with the tuner like shown in the first and second finger videos. Now we are going to practice placing our fourth finger on every string. We're going to start on the E string. So play an open E. First finger F sharp. Second finger G sharp. Third finger A. And notice I've kept all my fingers down. Now reach far for your fourth finger and that note is gonna be B. Go back to third finger, fourth finger, third finger, fourth finger, third finger, fourth finger. So I wanted to go back and forth between those two notes a couple of times so you could really feel the spacing or the distance between your three and four. Be sure to keep an eye on the shape of your fourth finger. So you want your fourth finger to look like all of your other fingers on the tip and curved. Also be mindful of the shape of your wrist. I know I was guilty of this for a long time and I see students do this quite frequently. They stick out their wrist when trying to go for your four, the fourth finger. So keep your wrist straight and in line with your forearm. Additionally, if you have really small hands, you might need to slightly alter the position of your thumb in order to reach the fourth finger comfortably. For me, I have average size hands, I'd say, and my thumb likes to hang out right here behind my first finger. 
However, if you have small hands, you might need to move your thumb across from your second finger, or sorry, excuse me, with your first finger or even your second finger. This will change the balance of your hand and make it easier to reach the fourth finger. Let's go to the A string now. Open A. B, first finger. C sharp, second finger. D, third finger. And E, fourth finger. D, E, D, E, D, D. Pretty good job. You might have noticed that as I was going for my fourth finger, I brought my elbow in towards my body a little bit. That is going to help elongate your fourth finger and make it easier to reach, especially on the lower strings. Let's move to D string. Open D. C, first finger. F sharp, second finger. G, third finger. And A, fourth finger. recommend keeping your fingers down if possible. If you find that you are, are really having trouble and you need to lift your one and your two, that is not the end of the world. Um, like I said, especially if you have smaller hands, you might have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get that fourth finger where you want it to. Um, a cool party trick I like to show people is that because I started playing when I was a kid, my hand sort of adapted and my fourth finger on my left hand is significantly longer than my fourth finger on my right hand. So, you know, if you're playing as an adult, that probably won't happen. So us who learned as kids might have a slight advantage there, but doesn't mean you can't do it. I knew a girl with extremely small hands who's a professional viola player. And we all know violas are bigger than violins, right? And she can use her fourth finger just fine. So if she can do it, you can do it. I promise you. Let's go over the G string. It might be helpful to move your elbow in or around or underneath, whatever it helps you visualize. Open G. A, first finger. B, second finger. C, third finger. And then D, fourth finger. see my elbow came really far around right when I was on the G string that's gonna allow my fourth finger to reach its spot a common issue that arises with fourth fingers especially at the beginning is the fourth finger locking out or looking something sort of like that when you play so the knuckle right here is locked out that happened to me for a really long really long time and it's just the strength thing it's just building up the strength in your fourth finger that will eventually allow you to have that beautiful curved shape Obviously, we want to try to have that shape, but the most important thing is, of course, the intonation or the pitch. Be sure to download the free PDF exercises that go along with this video. If you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next lesson.